Bruce Wayne attends the party where he announces plans to rebuild Gotham for the future. During this party, he meets Lincoln Mark, who is running for mayor. Bruce leaves the party after learning about a murder from Jim Gordon. Batman dones on the Batman costume and sets out to investigate the murder, which leads him to learning about someone which leads him to learning about someone that is coming after him. He also learns that Nightwing might be responsible for the murder. Batman continues to investigate the murder and uncover and uncovers several owl related references to the Court of Owls. As Bruce Wayne, he meets Lincoln Mark, but who warns him of impending danger. They are then attacked by a Talon, by a Talon who sentences Bruce to die. Despite the Talon being severely injured, the Talon is mysteriously able to walk away. Batman continues to investigate investigate both the murder and the owl related insignia which leads him to discovering the court of owl references of an old nursery rhyme that that Gothamites are taught as a kid. He also learns that the court of owl owls is nearly as old as Gotham and has been been there since Gotham's foundation. Batman uncovers a hidden base which is revealed to belong to the Court of Owls. There he is driven to the point of insanity. Can Batman escape the Court of Owls and what are the court's plans for Gotham? So I got this book from Comic Con and I really liked it. Um, Zack Snyder's run is definitely, um, definitely starts out with a very interesting tone. And, and how I view his work is, it's not necessarily a Batman story. It's less about Batman than it is about Gotham. It's, it's really how Batman views Gotham, rather than a Batman, a Batman-centric story. And I find that a very, very interesting take on the run. And um, a lot of Scott Snyder's work is very inspired, I think, by Morrison's run. But and sorry for the background noise, it's really, really raining where I am. But Gotham is more than a place where, where criminals run havoc. Gotham has a really interesting history to it. But Snyder does an interesting job at portraying, has inspired Batman in a way. And I really, really like that as well. Um, another thing that I thought was very interesting was the Court of Owls um, aspect to the story. Um, the Court of Owls seemed to reflect Batman, or, or certainly the costume does. Sort of, I saw little parallels between um, the... Alan and Batman himself, and it was a very, very interesting sort of comparison, particularly when it regards to owls and bats, because I've always imagined owls to be like these, this majestic creature, but Scott Snyder does a very interesting sort of horror twist on the owls. Sort of, the owls feed 
on these bats, and it's sort of like um, the Court of Owls will completely destroy Batman because they're natural enemies. And, and the fact that Batman doesn't know about the Court of Owls makes it really, really interesting because it takes away some of his own security. And also what's interesting about the Court of Owls is that it's a nursery rhyme. It's one of those fables that was told to your children at a very young age. And sort of, it's this whole conspiracy that goes alongside what I said earlier about the fact that Gotham has a very, very rich back, back, you know, backstory to it as well. And one of the things I love about the story is sort of that the Court of Vowels are part of the history of Gotham. Batman in this story is very, very um, driven and is very, very obsessed about the Court of Vowels. And the writing that Scott Snyder does is really, really good. I found that um, there was this particular scene towards the end of the book that was a bit problematic for me. The, the artwork, b b b by the way, is great in this book. It's really, really good. Um, however, there's a scene in the book where Batman gets trapped inside within the Court of Owls base. Um, and this is a spoiler, by the way. Um, he gets trapped inside this maze and um, he's sort of been there for weeks, you know, he sort of has been in there for weeks. And he's tired, um, he's tired, he hasn't eaten, he hasn't drank any water. And he begins to get a bit crazy. And the, the artwork is really well done, because you can... You can see some of the, um, you know, some of the costume sort of break off and disintegrate because he's been in the costume for so long. During the, this period in the book, um, you kept on having to turn the page. Now, this is ordinarily would be fine. Um, and I get what Greg Capullo is trying to do. He's trying to portray the madness of um, of what Batman's going through. It's just, it broke the flow of the book because like, like you're reading it from like that and then you're reading it like that with the page that you're reading on this side and it's just it broke the flow a bit for me especially for that bit because that bit was really really good um and another um, another more minor tiny teeny tiny complaint that i have is how some of this, um, some of what Zack Snyder says in this book about Batman's origins may contradict what happens in Zero Year. This is a minor, minor complaint, but it's within Zack Snyder's own work. And the problem is, is the consistency of his run moving forward. All in all, I would give this book about a 4 out of 5. It's a really, really good book. Um, I do recommend it for people who want to get into um, Batman 
And it's actually, it, it's another strong tight, you know, strong title in the new 52. Um, so yeah, and it's one of, it's something that got me into Batman. So, yeah. So that's my review over. Um, subscribe if you liked this video or you want to hear more comic book reviews. Um, I have reviewed more New 52 titles. If you like the New 52 or want to get into um, the New 52, um, please click on the links. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed my comic book review. Um, my next comic book review will be Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I'm in the process of reviewing that book, so stay tuned for that. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, and I shall see you all later for another comic book review. Bye.